Do you know what stage of ego you're in? One third of you are in the expert stage of the nine stages of ego development theory. And all of you likely interact with someone at this stage. The nine stages of ego development was pioneered by Jane Levinger and further developed by Susan Cook Reuter. Ego stages are idealizations. They describe the ideal outcome of healthy development for each increase in perspective and integration at a new level. No individual fits all aspects of these descriptions. They serve as a roadmap, as a way for individuals to orient themselves about how they currently see reality. The expert stage is also known as the self-conscious stage. Anyone currently in this stage will have passed through all three earlier ego stages sequentially. The expert, along with the earlier diplomat and later achiever stages, make up 80% of the population. And these are all conventional stages, which are said to be mostly socially programmed. What is the ego? And why is it important to learn about these stages? To start with, the ego is inherently insecure because it's almost entirely a creation of the mind. It doesn't exist except in the world of perception. It lives in your thoughts as well as your projections. It's what you want yourself to be and what you want others to think you are. It's tied up with status symbols and reputation. I think it's important to understand and make sense of your own egos so that no matter how real and impactful your ego can be on you, there is something deeper that tells you this situation really isn't so important. Let's not take ourselves so seriously. And this knowledge can help you develop or at least desire to develop a more detached perspective of your own egos and others as well. My name is Johanna, and if you're new here, I provide content to help you learn to live by your heart instead of being driven by the unexamined habits and beliefs created from the mind. Higher ego stages are not necessarily any better than earlier ones. It's more a matter of what fits best. As Lovinger noted a long time ago, later is not happier or more adapted. On the contrary, with greater awareness comes also greater awareness of unresolvable dilemmas and paradoxes in life. The expert stage is numbered three, four. Stages with two numbers divided by a slash are stages of differentiation. The move of differentiation makes a person take a step back and distance themselves from the previous ego stage they were in. They take on a new perspective and see their earlier viewpoint as unwanted and difficult. For an expert, they might see their earlier self, who wanted so much to fit into the group, as being an immature stage of their life. Each time someone emerges from a previously shared worldview, they are apt to focus on their differences from the previous stage. They assert their newly won independence, and they reject any prior ideas they once held about living their ideal life. The expert stage is when a person begins to take a third person perspective, seeing themselves and others as separate individuals with unique differences. This is when you can start to look at yourself objectively and see what makes you unique or special. The expert's identity 
is now made up of personal traits. And you are self-conscious in the sense of readily feeling uneasy and being judged. How we perceive others in life is also how we perceive ourselves. So it's no surprise that experts also have a need for constant comparison between themselves and others. Experts will ask themselves, how do I measure up against this person? And do others measure up to my standards? In their minds, they assume that you must be thinking the same thing. In this stage, for the first time, the expert has the capacity for self-reflection. They can use this perspective to reflect upon their own behavior as well as others' behavior. However, this capacity for self-reflection is primitive because most of the expert's energy is externally focused. Their self-understanding is only just beginning to develop. So instead of wanting to fit into the group like they did in the earlier diplomat stage, there is this desire to stand out from the group, to be unique and special. They identify and enjoy getting respect for what they know and what they can do for a change. So if you criticize either of these, what they know or what they do, they will experience that criticism as a rebuke of their whole self-image. Finding one's own voice becomes more necessary when we move away from home and enter the job market. This is a time when traditions, beliefs, and values of family, friends, and religion may be abandoned. Although this shows some rebellion to group beliefs, the expert is also quick to parrot the opinions of those they respect. They still have a need to learn to analyze matters and come to their own conclusions. There's also still a need for what's called a reference group, a group where they can both be accepted and respected. But one thing has changed. Now it's the reason for respect that changes. They yearn to be accepted because they are different and special. Their skills, expertise, and knowledge are used as ways to distinguish themselves. This is also a period when the person begins introspection the expert will look at what behaviors to adopt to make them more special, to meet a goal of being more successful and respected. They begin to describe themselves with more differentiated attributes than their diplomat colleagues might. There is an interest in sharing one's traits in contrast to others to further emphasize their differences. They also begin to assert their own needs and wants, which had been suppressed in the previous stage in order to be accepted by the group. Now the person wants to be accepted by others because of their uniqueness. And there is a desire to be better than others or to stand out. There is a feeling of having figured it all out. They know all the answers and they are certain in what they believe. They can feel righteous and to help support their own views, they will put others in the wrong. Their standards are high, both morally as well as how things should be. Their concern is being responsible and fulfilling obligations. At this stage, they may be compulsive and perfectionist. They evaluate others according to their own standards and capabilities. 
They may think, he's not a good speaker, so I must be smarter than him. Severe criticism of how someone else thinks is a common form of intellectual aggression at this stage. Their sense of superiority is not well hidden. No one can tell this person what they don't already know or know better. Their defense to a different opinion will be dismissing the evidence or belittling others. What does he know? He doesn't have a PhD or he hasn't been published. In relating to others, this person commonly has the yes, but syndrome. They might respond to a statement you make about something with, I know, or yes, that's true, but not in this case. On the positive side, an expert is talented at finding better solutions, ideas, and alternatives. So they can be positive contributors to an organization. The issue they have is being able to prioritize alternatives. They don't know when good is good enough. They can always do better. And that's when their perfectionist side comes into play and can drag them down. In the previous ego stage, as a diplomat, aggression was suppressed for the sake of acceptance. Now, hostility shows itself in humor. An expert will often ridicule others to get their aggression out. They can tease and put you down with a laugh and a smile. They enjoy battling opposing viewpoints with others. Their world is clear cut and certain, and they feel entitled to push their views onto others. At this stage, the expert can think abstractly and can compare multiple views. In fact, experts tend to generate many solutions without being able to prioritize among them and see which is the best solution. They get hung up in the decision process and the details. When they're promoted to managers, they often fail to see the big picture that is the goal of their department. So they usually fail simply because they cannot prioritize correctly. Many professions in areas of expertise are completely at home here. Engineering, legal professions, as well as bureaucrats, and anyone who is a highly educated expert can thrive at this stage. Having several degrees and authorities will provide this person with support of their self-image. Being in charge of oneself and one's environment is a leading trait. The downfall is that feeling special can easily lead them to feelings of superiority as they want to stand out. Not being able to hide this sense of superiority can lead to difficult interpersonal relationships, especially with other experts who feel they are superior as well. The main defenses of this ego stage are going to be rationalizing and explaining away what doesn't fit their expectations or beliefs. They have an answer or an explanation for everything. If something doesn't work as it should, they will blame the process, the tools, or the incompetence of others. They feel righteous and tend to blame others and put them in the wrong. An expert has high moral standards, and when they fall short of these, they will be disappointed with themselves and experience feelings of shame and guilt for not living up to their own high standard of values. As managers and consultants, these types ask many questions. They will question your decisions, and this can be interpreted as criticism and blame. Their main anxiety 
is losing their sense of uniqueness. They don't want to regress back to the diplomat stage and be like everyone else in the group. They are close-minded in their views because they fear that by opening up to others' views, they will lose their sense of certainty and their confidence. This supports their sense of self, so they will protect this fear by being forward and bold. They may come off as rather cocky. A common motto they might have is, if I can do it, you can. And this viewpoint demonstrates their lack of awareness that people differ and their way may not work for everyone. It doesn't mean others aren't as good or just as talented. These types are set in their ways and resistant to change. No one can get through to the expert to show them a better way or tell them anything they don't already know. They will simply discredit any argument that doesn't fit with theirs, dismiss the evidence, or belittle the person presenting the argument. As work colleagues, experts can be difficult to work with. They aren't team players. They want to be single contributors so they can get all of the credit. They may not hesitate to take credit for your work if they can get away with it. They want the glory at any cost. Some of their talents are creating efficiencies and perfecting processes to help things run more smoothly. Perfectionism is a challenge for them. When delegating a task, they want it done their way. And if it's done differently, they will quickly take it back and prefer to do it the right way, which for them is doing it themselves. This can lead to being overworked, taking their work home, or overburdening themselves with perfection at home as well. If you've recognized the expert type here, then I hope you've learned some key points about their behavior such that you don't put too much energy into trying to argue with them and see that if they criticize you or your methods, that they just can't accept things being done any way but theirs. Your way is different, your viewpoints are different, and they may just view you as a threat for those reasons. If you've recognized yourself as an expert, try to see how much you overburden yourself with perfectionism. Try reminding yourself of the big picture at work or at home. Focus on the mission statement or the goals of your department at work. Develop the courage to ask for feedback, knowing that yes, it will be painful, but it won't destroy you. See how your way of questioning or criticizing others can make you seem to them. Practice being more introspective and honest about what you see as a curious observer without criticism or blame. No matter what stage you're in, this is a good practice to help you understand yourself better. And it will set you apart from your expert colleagues. I've added links to Susan Cook Reuters research in the description below. Join me next time when I'll be covering stage four, the achiever.